This video is brought to you by Keeps. Stick around to hear more about the discount that they're providing to the entire UE community. All right, so today, once again, we are back in the world of Twitch because this platform has a somewhat uncanny ability to attract and nurture some of the worst individuals and business endeavors that I've ever seen in my entire life. Something about the world of teenage millionaires and fancy C-suite titles appears to be like catnip for these entrepreneurs. Instead of operating legitimate or reputable projects, they just flail around on the proverbial floor shouting, I have a mansion. I am a CEO. My newest group of loosely associated random streamers is going to change Twitch forever and look how much money I have. It's pathetic. The culture is pathetic, the results are pathetic, the ideas are pathetic, and the whole thing is just a bunch of teenagers chasing clout so hard that they can't even see they left the path hours ago with no food, no water, no compass, and a hard-on for narcissistic praise that will put them at the bottom of the social barrel for years to come. Suffice it to say, I think the culture on Twitch has taken a pretty sharp nosedive in recent years, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. But that's not the point. The point is, we have a new up-and-coming reality show to talk about called Twitch's Most Eligible. Twitch's most eligible is basically a worse version of The Bachelor. The idea was pretty simple. Get a bunch of low viewer count, highly attractive female streamers in a secluded mansion and have them compete over a high viewer count, random male League of Legends streamer. Any red flags yet? No? Okay. The show was primarily operated in these early stages by Matthew Pelletier. Pelletier, I don't know how to say that, and I don't care, which could be gleaned from their official website, which also heavily utilizes the Twitch official branding. Did Twitch approve this? Is Twitch backing the project? Probably not, but there it is. Matt is also on LinkedIn, and I would like to add that for like over a week at least now, I've had people emailing me about this show because it seemed fake, possibly predatory, and at best, extremely sketchy. Well, on LinkedIn, Matt is listed as the founder of Giron Media LLC in Florida. On their official website, utilizing the Twitch branding again, there is reference to Matt's Reality TV, which was founded in 2021. Except neither Giron Media LLC nor Matt's Reality TV are actual companies in the state of Florida. They don't exist. Not only that, but I also checked the state of Kentucky, I'll explain why in just a minute here, and found nothing there either. And eventually, attempting to be thorough, I checked the entire United States. These companies do not exist that I could find. They might be out there, correct me if I'm wrong, but even if they are, that's just the beginning. Now, side note, have you ever gotten so stressed that your hair fell out? There's probably some pretty horrifying stuff you have to deal with outside of all this, if that's the case, but that's not the point, because the hair falling out, we can fix that. Keeps. Keeps can help prevent hair loss, which two out of three men above the age of 35 suffer from. Also, according to my Big Brother data harvesting YouTube analytics page, shout out to Big Tech, not really, I actually hate Big Tech, for the most part. Anyway, pretty much all of you watching this right now are men between 18 and 45. Anybody else, get the... F I'm kidding. I appreciate you. Keeps can be delivered right to your home with no doctor's visit required, and through the link down below, keeps.com slash UEG, you'll get 50% off your first purchase. Some men even experience hair growth while on Keeps, so if you have any need at all, any in the universe, maybe also try to fix the underlying stress factors of life's problems that landed you here too, but if you are losing your hair, make sure to use the link down below for 50% off your first purchase. Again, that's keeps.com slash UEG, more five-star reviews than any competitors. Big thank you to them for sponsoring the channel. Setting aside the fact that this website is very, very low effort and contains excess duplicate information on numerous different pages, it was clear that the show had, shall we say, problems. Let's really boil it down to the core concept here. During a pandemic, a global pandemic, when there are travel restrictions on many people around the country, and the world for that matter, this random man, who is apparently a founder of two companies that don't appear to exist at all, wants to gather a bunch of low viewer count, attractive female streamers in a faraway secluded mansion where they will compete for one night, which is important, I'll come back to that later on, to what? Win the favor of a high viewer count male streamer? Can we acknowledge what's happening here or should we just play along for a bit longer? Understanding the concept, we have to look at the people who are actually approached. Keep in mind, I was receiving emails such as this right here from some of the streamers who were being recruited into this reality show. The male streamer profiles that were listed on the website, now removed by the way, were X Hazard and Wings of Death. Wings of Death is the focus here because he is, number one, a streamer with very high viewership, number two, an apparent bachelor in the show, and three, he had actually declined to participate in the show and was under the impression that they had created a private mock-up profile for him that was not visible to the public. Wings of Death has cited concerns of timing and generally just did not want to be a part of the program, to which Matt quote unquote, had asked to make a profile anyways as an example which would not be visible to the broader audience. 
Nope. He made a profile, put it out to the public, and many people began to assume that Wings of Death would be one of the bachelors at a secluded mansion where a bunch of low view count female streamers were flown in specifically to compete in a totally innocent, 100% not sketchy, fantastic reality show that isn't run by someone with two businesses that appear to be fake. Still not done. The mansion, the billionaire's palace, is an Airbnb in Kentucky, hence why I checked the Kentucky Secretary of State archives for the business registration after Florida. And thanks to BX Bullet, some of you may remember that name from another video I did where she uncovered a great deal of info on a serial scammer who, surprise, surprise, operated on Twitch while hiring hackers to attack people he didn't like. But anyways, thanks to BX Bullet, I was able to learn that someone from the show's Discord server and another investigator named Zach Busey, who has an abundance of information on this subject across all of his Twitter, which helped me create this video, so shout out to both him and BX Bullet. I will link their social media profiles down below. Thanks to them, the actual Airbnb was discovered, where this mansion was, and at the time, it had not been booked. All of this was occurring around a property that was not even rented. Let's keep going. It turns out Matt Pelletier, or whatever, has not always gone by that name, Pelletier. He used to be Matt Fox, as listed on his Udemy page that was still around. Using the exact same photo, he is now Matt Pelletier on sections of the Twitch's most eligible website, some of which have since been removed, except, wait a minute, during the massive email recruitment campaign for this show, primarily targeting young, female, attractive streamers, Matt Fox was sending emails with a profile picture of a completely different human being. Furthermore, this is around the time where the official Twitch's most eligible Twitter account began to post things like this, because what you really want when flying out to a secluded mansion in the middle of nowhere during a global pandemic is to have the founder of the show, who has two businesses which don't appear to exist, and two names with different pictures but are clearly designed to be the same person, just an alias, to start hitting on you. In total, something like 120 or more contestants were approached, most of them smaller, attractive female broadcasters. Some of them were immunocompromised, meaning that traveling during a pandemic was basically not an option, but no due diligence had ever been done on that front whatsoever. And allegedly, though I cannot officially confirm this myself, some of them were underage. In my own emails, I found the requested to remain anonymous. Correspondence from the show's recruiter, one of, one of the recruiters, Matt Fox was out there doing the same thing at the time, named Faith Curry. I can't find any evidence online of Faith Curry being a real person. Literally not a single shred of an online profile or identity to back up their existence. This email also seems to confirm that the show was booking out in advance past the male Bachelor contestants to the female Bachelorette contestants, which would mean that over 100 people were being approached for flight info, ID copies, and other materials by someone quite probably operating as multiple fake identities, hitting on potential contestants through the show's official social media profiles with his two business entities that probably don't exist. Oh, and the largest streamer on their roster, which was lending credibility to the project, had actually declined the offer, but was listed anyways, on top of the mansion being an Airbnb that wasn't rented. Surprise, surprise, the show began to implode, and what came after was a statement from the Twitter page which covered a number of these problems. Yep, Matt Fox was an alias, and Faith Curry is just listed as she's real and streams sometimes with her husband, so trust me, bro. But there is not a stream link included, unlike Dr. Eugenia Sue, a confirmed real person, directly above. The post claims that Wings of Death gave them permission to use his profile, which seems like a deliberate misinterpretation of the facts owing to the discrepancy of public versus private. And the post also claims that they were almost done booking the mansion, but wanted to wait until they had fully casted the show owing to the strict and quickly approaching deadline, which is why they were spamming out dozens and dozens of emails without actually checking who they were speaking with. The statement concludes by saying that the show will close down until they can figure out how best to proceed. Probably a really good call, but now I want to discuss why this entire concept is dead in the water, because there was a complete lack of any legitimate ROI, and the whole show just would hemorrhage capital until it died. ROI means return on investment, and this show just simply didn't even bother thinking about that. The framework was a four to six hour single broadcast episode where nine females would compete over a male and presumably, if the email evidence is accurate, vice versa. That's idiotic. Reason being, this requires 10 separate people to be flown out to a remote mansion just for a six, four to six hour broadcast. The broadcast would be on Twitch, which avoids the standard ROI for dating shows on actual networks, and would be focused on 9 out of 10 small broadcasters who cannot pull in metrics based on their own name. 
Also, it totally voids the concept of a drawn-out audience attachment loop with regard to individual characters. It would be a blur of pretty faces, you probably couldn't even remember everyone's name, honestly, and then on to the next with a whole new cast. That's not a viable dating show framework. This means that either the show itself or The Bachelor slash Bachelorette would need to be the primary driving force behind their viewership, because despite their email framing, a five-figure marketing budget is absolutely nothing when you consider that the average cost of a single episode is going to be 10 or more round-trip flights, a mansion, the advertising, food, production equipment, and so much else that you really cannot even properly plan for. This doesn't even take into consideration all of the legal and various different procedural hurdles that you have to consider when you're doing a show like this. Like on MTV, when you see some reality show, there is a tremendous amount of support staff. You have to have medical people on site. You have to have all sorts of other things that are ready to go. A whole bunch of different legal documents need to be signed, releases of liability, etc. All of that stuff was not happening here. The production value or production costs, I should say, associated with something like this are tremendous, and you are not going to recoup your investment with this model. These episodes would need to make tens of thousands of dollars each, and I'm not talking low tens of thousands, probably high tens of thousands, every single time without fail. And they would need to do so based on the non-existent social following of the show's producing company, the five-figure ad spend, as if that's impressive, or the broadcasters who were being taken advantage of in a concept that is so poorly planned, or flat-out fake, more likely, that it was built upon false identities and likely fake companies. Oh, and it's a global pandemic on top of that, so traveling is a pain in the ass, and safety precautions would further complicate the show if done properly, which leads me to the safe assumption, honestly, that they likely wouldn't have bothered. Bottom line, Twitch's most eligible is an absolute disaster. A disaster rife with false names, false claims, and false credibility on top of that. The show had no legs from the get-go. The concept felt more like a scam to harvest personal information than an actual dating show with potential or any sort of future. And from top to bottom, the idea of flying out a bunch of small view count female streamers to compete, whatever the hell that would actually mean in the context of this show, over a high view count male broadcaster for one night, it just hits the ear wrong, especially when the show's founder is hitting on people and using fake identities to spam email dozens of people about flying to a property that isn't even booked during a global pandemic at or near rock bottom. Oh, and also the biggest profile associated with this show, like the biggest broadcaster, had actually declined to be involved. One out of ten, bad concept. But that's it. If you want to support, there are links down below. Please consider checking out Odyssey. It's just a YouTube alternative, and watching my content there is very rewarding for me as a creator. Also, it's a great platform with a bright future, etc. Also, Locals, you can subscribe for $5 a month. I upload the audio for the videos and ad-free versions over there as well, plus another YouTuber to check out. Merch, social media, also Keeps, link down below, etc., etc. You get the point. I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.